Hi, I'm Karen. We're here at Montevilla Sewing Center and we're talking about the Janome 3160. You may have a 3160 that looks a little bit different as far as colors. There are several different versions of the 3160. This one happens to be the Quilts of Valor version, but all of them work the same way. So to start with, we're going to talk about some of these stitches that we can do, and I'm not gonna do all of them right now, but the most useful ones are right up here, and of course you have buttonholes down here. But today we're gonna to talk about the straight stitches and the utility stitches. So over here, you can of course change your, just push that button until you get to the stitch that, number that you want that corresponds to these numbers. Now when you first turn on your machine, it's going to wake up as zero, zero, which is your first stitch. And of course you have 60 stitches, zero, zero being the first and 59 the last. If you want to get quickly to any stitch that's down here, say for instance one of your buttonhole stitches, just push the down arrow as long as the cursors are right there and you can get to whichever one you want. Say we want, want to go to 50, there we are like that. To get back up to this end here, just push this until you get back to zero, zero. All right, up here is gonna show you which foot you should be using. So if I was going to be doing a buttonhole for instance, or an eyelet that says foot F, which is this foot right here. Uh, one of the buttonholes is gonna take foot R, which is this big one down here. And we're gonna get more into the accessories on a later video. So for now, I just wanted to tell you that's what those little letters are up there. So let's get back to stitch zero, zero. Okay, so for regular sewing, we put our presser foot down, start stitching on the fabric, not off the edge of the fabric, and when you get down to the end here, make sure you don't stitch off the edge of the fabric. So put your foot on the foot control. You can press the reverse button. Again, making sure you don't stitch off the edge of the fabric. And this machine tends to roll another stitch, so just kind of keep that in mind for where your stop and start is. Stitching forward. By the way, I have this on medium speed. And at this point, stop, press your reverse button, let it back up, and there you go. Now the machine is going to stop with a needle up as long as you start with a needle up. For an ex example for that would be if we started with needle down, it's gonna stop with needle down. Nice uh, thing about having a needle down is Say you come to where you want to turn a corner. So needle down, you can turn your corner or take a look at your stitches and come right back to them. So turning a corner would be like that. We also have our thread cutter button, which is really convenient. Just push that button. It cuts the thread under the machine, under, under the needle plate and leaves these nice short little tails like that, which you can either leave as part of the inside of your garment or you can trim them off later. Okay, so that is straight stitch. You can also, with stitch number zero 01, which you go up here, that just stitches the same exact straight stitch, but it's on the left-hand side. That might be convenient if you're putting, um, say, D-rings or something like that on there. If you're stitching with your center needle position, you can also move the needle over by going over here to the stitch width, which in this case would be needle position, and then using your down arrow, you can push your needle over to the left or to the right. And you can also press and hold, and it will step over to the maximum. And that little quick beep means it's to the maximum. To get it back into default setting, just go out of that stitch out of that stitch, back into that stitch, and it gets back to de default. So we can make shorter or longer stitches. Now notice after I've used the cutter button, that little thread from the bobbin is not up there anymore. But I can start stitching even though that's not there. And that's what I did actually over here. I started stitching even though I had cut it off. Now, stitch number two is genius. I'll show you that's really cool. What that does is it builds in a back stitch at the beginning and then at the end of your stitch. So here we go. 
I've got it. And I like to hold on to my thread tail for the first couple stitches. It's just kind of a preventing the top thread from being pulled down. Once you've made a couple of stitches, that thread is locked into the fabric. So now watch. You see how it made that back stitch at the end here when we want to stop? I press this now. The reason why it stopped with needle down is so I started with needle down. So it could have stopped with needle up. But I press this and I don't have to hold on to that. All I have to do is keep my foot on the foot control. I'm going to slow it down so you can see what that's doing. And it slows down by itself. And then I can push the cutter button, which will cut the threads and lift the needle. Isn't that beautiful? So what that does, stitch number two, it gives you four stitches going forward, four stitches going back, and it goes right back to where you started. And at the end, this is where I stopped. I pressed this, didn't have to hold it. I just pressed it, kept my foot down on the pedal. It stitched four stitches back and stitched forward right to where I stopped. Then I pre pressed the uh, cutter button and it cut the threads. Of course, if you're sewing, you don't have to use the cutter button here. You can use your scissors or you can use the little uh, thread cutter on the side. That's okay too. Stitch number three basically does the same thing, only it does this little locking stitch at the beginning and at the end. Um, I kind of like stitch number two better because I like a little firmer um, tie off of my thread. <clears throat> but some people like that nice clean look. And so I'll give you an example of what that does here. It, see how it stitches in place. And then when I'm done stitching, I just press this, hold this, it stitches in place, moves the feed dogs just a tiny little bit. Got the thread and that's what it looks like. So it's a little bit of a cleaner look to your start and your stop. Uh, again, the, uh, the longer backwards and forwards is a little bit more secure. So it kind of depends on the look you're going for. Number four is really genius. What that does is it stitches two stitches forward and one back, putting three times the amount of thread in there and also giving you a stretchy stitch. Now your woven fabric is pretty stable on the straight of grain, but on the bias, it tends to stretch. Now that's important if you're sewing a um, garment that's either made on the bias or if you have part of your garment, say the back crotch seam or the back of an armhole that has stretch to it. You want to have this stitch, which is going to help make your stitch stronger, your seam stronger and keep it from coming unstitched later on. So watch what it does. I'm gonna slow that way down two stitches forward, one stitch back. Okay, and that's all a matter of how the feed dogs work. I'm gonna speed this up so you can see what that looks like fast. I'm just aiming for this corner here. <clears throat> Pardon me. And then because every stitch is basically locked, you don't have to do a back stitch because every stitch has its own. And that will stretch as much as the fabric stretches. It plus it's a nice bold stitch if you're looking for a stitch that um, like a top stitch or a decorative stitch is really nice for that. Okay, <clears throat> and then <clears throat> stitch number five is what we like to call the lightning stitch. And that is also good for being stretchy. It's not quite as strong and sturdy as your three-step straight stitch or your um, stretch stitch. But it is basically, I'm gonna slow that down so you can take a look at what it's doing. It's kind of like a bent zigzag. It stitches forward and then to the side, very narrow. So I'm gonna make that longer. This is a good stitch for, um, 
for knits because it's a little bit less bold than this stitch here, but it's going to give your stretch in your seam. Now, both of these stitches, especially this one, are going to be difficult to remove, so make sure you have them where you want them. If you have a curved seam, put little dots where you're going to aim for your stitches because if you have to rip this out, it's not nearly as easy to rip out as this one here. Just keep that in mind. But because of that, it's also going to be a stronger, longer lasting stitch. Number six is the same as number five, except it's over to the left-hand side, kind of similar to zero, zero, and zero, one. Number seven is our good old-fashioned zigzag, which we're all familiar with. Zigzag, like all of these stitches, can be widened or narrowed, lengthened or shortened. So the regular zigzag, I'm going to show you what it does. To start with, it has a built-in locking stitch, already built in. See how it stitches in place? and then it starts zigzagging. So let's do a little more zigzag. You can do a reverse in your zigzag if you want to, or at the end of your zigzag, you can simply do the locking stitch, press that once, keep your foot down on the pedal until it stops zigzagging, by its, or stops uh, doing a locking stitch by itself. You can either use the cutter button or your um, cutter on the side of your machine. Now, on this thin fabric, see how it scrunched that up? That's because this fabric is not very stable. To make your zigzag, if you're uh, zigzagging on thin fabric like this, to make it a little more stable, you can use what I like to use, cutaway stabilizer, which is actually it's a tearaway stabilizer. And you can use that behind your stitches. I'm gonna show you how that would work. So here, start out the same way. I haven't changed anything up here. All I've done different was using the stabilizer. See how much nice and smooth that is? This is also a good one to use in some of these other stitches that have some width to them where you want a nice flat stitch. You don't always have to use this, just test it out. Just test it out without it. And if you like, if it does seem to scrunch up your stitches, then use a little bit of stabilizer. We do have stabilizer here at um, Montevilla Sewing Center, and you can just tear away your stabilizer. It leaves a little bit in the stitches, but that's on the back of your fabric. So that will help improve your decorative stitches. Now, zigzag is really useful for a lot of things, and a lot of people use your zig their zigzag to finish the edges of their fabric. So for instance, we have this denim, which tends to want to fray excessively. So you start here, and what we want to have is the stitch going into the fabric and then off the edge of the fabric. And if it's not quite far enough off the edge, you can go over here, make your stitch wider, and then, so like for uh, loosely woven fabric, denim tends, denim and um, fabrics like canvas tend to be a little more loosely woven, so you want a wider stitch. Now with this stitch, just kind of watch in the needle plate there, and you can see it goes off to one side. You don't want to get your fabric so far over that it actually gets into the fabric or so close to the edge that it doesn't really quite catch the edge of your fabric. So this is how to do it. You want to be able to see the edges the uh, thread going past the edge of your fabric. This is how not to do it. This is a matter of practice. You'll get better, just like driving. You practice in a big parking lot with no light poles so that you can get good at it. Just practice, take your time, slow your machine down, and you'll get more control over your machine. Now, this stitch here, number eight, I really like number eight. Number eight is great for if you have a hole in a pair of your gardening jeans. Well, you don't want the hole, but it doesn't really matter if you get a nice clean, um, nice clean mend, but what this is gonna do is mend that hole. So if your gardening shears made a little hole in your fabric, and what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this, rough it up. So now we have, it's gone through the wash, you can put, can put a piece of backing material. In fact, you might want to do that, just a little piece, just to kind of cover that up, especially if it's really fuzzy looking. I would recommend cutting a piece of fabric on the bias 
like this. This little patch you can put back behind there. Probably best to have the same color, but that's what I had. Okay, now this stitch, let me show you to begin with what it looks like on here. If I just left it at default, this is what it's going to look like. It starts with a locking stitch. And then you can either do a back stitch. Let's try this. Okay. Locking stitch is what I want. There we go. Cut that off. Okay, so that's the default. But we can also make this shorter and wider, I believe. Yes. So I want to make sure that I really cover up the edges of this stitch really well. I don't know what happened to my, my patch. I'm going to cut a new one. There we go. We want to make sure we cover up the edges of that that hole in that fabric because it may have gone through the wash a few times and got really frayed at the edges. So that's why I am widening number eight to the widest width and then also now I'm going to shorten it because I want those stitches to be a little closer together. I'm going to go down to that much here. So here we go. This is a great mending stitch. Now I could either do the reverse button, but I would rather leave needle down, turn it around, and go back over this several times. I'm using contrasting thread so you can see what I'm doing, but normally you'd want to use the same color of thread as your jeans, whatever the faded look is that you're going for here. So go over that several times. This is also a great way to repair towels because this stitch will uh, allow, as long as you don't do it too many times, it'll allow some of those loops to come up through your, um, your mend. Go that way. And on a towel, you wouldn't necessarily need to use a backing uh, piece of fabric. So there we have mended, got a nice strong mend. I can go around and trim this off if I want to, but even if I didn't, this is on the bias. It's going to not um, fray. Okay, then we have stitch number nine. Let's go back over here. Stitch number nine is one of those wonderful stitches that stitches and overcasts all in one step. Kind of like a serger, not exactly. A serger will also trim your threads. But what we want to do is, this is going to make that locking stitch at the beginning and then it stitches some stitches forward and stitches back. I'm going to also make this a wider stitch here. There we go. Because I want to make sure and overcast the edges of my fabric. This seam allowance, if I'm overcasting, is going to be narrow, probably a little bit less than a quarter of an inch. If you look here carefully, I'm going to sew slowly so you can see what it's doing. It actually has a stitch in the middle. So it stitches forward back a little, little bit, takes a little stitch there, and then one off to the side. And this is also one of those that you want to practice, steer it correctly so you don't get, get too close to the edge and so you don't get too far away from the edge. I'm going to go a little faster on that so you can see what I'm doing. That ends up. There we go. Now, this is not going to be quite as fast as just sewing straight, but if you want to do that seam overcast at the same time, you can certainly do that. Now, the reason why it gives that extra little stitch in the middle, I'll show you why that in a second here. And I'm going to just do my, um, oh, your locking stitch, make sure you're doing that on your fabric, not off the edge of the fabric. It's kind of like um, if you did it out past the edge of the fabric, it wouldn't have enough uh, pull on the thread to really make a knot. It just needs the fabric. So I did this, keep my foot on the fabric. And what it did is it got to the end of the stitch cycle. That's why it made it a little bit more. So isn't that beautiful there? You've got a nice sturdy seam, got some stretch to it if you need that stretch, and you've also got an overcast edge. So that's some of the basic stitches on this machine. 
Um, we have some other videos later for how to do buttonholes and blind hem and some of the other decorative stitches. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you have questions or comments, make sure you leave those in the box down below. And stay tuned for some of our other videos. Thanks for coming. Bye.